Puck was the first successful humor magazine in the United States of colorful cartoons, caricatures and political satire of the issues of the day. It was published from 1871 until 1918. A collection of Puck cartoons dating from 1879 to 1903 is maintained by the Special Collections Research Center of the George Washington University. History the weekly magazine was founded by Joseph Ferdinand Kepler in St. Louis. It began publishing English and German language editions in March 1871. Five years later, the German edition of Puck moved to New York City, where the first magazine was published on September 27, 1876. The English-language edition soon followed on March 14, 1877. The English-language magazine continued in operation for more than 40 years under several owners and editors, until it was bought by the William Randolph Hearst Company in 1916. The publication lasted two more years. The final edition was distributed September 5, 1918. A typical 32-page issue contained a full-color political cartoon on the front cover and a color non-political cartoon or comic strip on the back cover. There was always a double-page color centerfold, usually on a political topic. There were numerous black-and-white cartoons used to illustrate humorous anecdotes. A page of editorials commented on the issues of the day, and the last few pages were devoted to advertisements. Puckish means childishly mischievous. This led Shakespeare's Puck character to be recast as a charming near-naked boy and used as the title of the magazine. Puck was the first magazine to carry illustrated advertising and the first to successfully adopt full-color lithography printing for a weekly publication. The magazine consisted of 16 pages measuring 10 inches by 13.5 inches with front and back covers in color and a color double page centerfold. The cover always quoted Puck saying, What fools these mortals be? The jaunty symbol of Puck is conceived as a putto in a top hat who admires himself in a hand mirror. He appears not only on the magazine covers but over the entrance to the Puck building in New York's Nolita neighborhood, where the magazine was published as well. In May 1893, Puck Press published a selection of cartoons from Puck by Joseph Kepler featuring 56 cartoons chosen by Kepler as his best work. Shortly thereafter, Joseph Kepler died, and Henry Killer Bunner, editor of Puck since 1877 continued the magazine until his own death in 1896. Harry Leon Wilson replaced Bunner and remained editor until he resigned in 1902. Joseph Kepler, Jr., then became the editor. Distinguished contributors over the years, Puck employed many early cartoonists of note, including Louis Dalrymple, Bernhard Gillum, Livingston Hopkins, Frederick Burropper, Louis Glackins, Albert Levering, Frank Nankavell, J.S. Puffer, Rose O'Neill, Charles Taylor, James Albert Wales and Eugene Zimmerman. Politics and Religion Politically it sided with the Bourbon Democrats, whose hero was Grover Cleveland. It favored German Americans and victimized Irish Americans. As Thomas explains, I, in an age of partisan politics and partisan journalism, Puck became the nation's premier journal of graphic humor and political satire, played an important role as a non-partisan crusader for good government and the triumph of American constitutional ideals. Its prime targets, however, were not just corrupt machine politicians. The magazine included as well what it, like the letter press, condemned as the nefarious political agenda of the Catholic Church, especially its new Pope, Leo XIII. Indeed, New York's infamous Irish Tammany Hall, committed to spoils and patronage as the means of dominating the body politic was all the more dangerous to Puck because, beginning in the 1870s, Irish Catholics dominated it. The Hall's Irish Catholic base enabled the magazine to rationalize more completely its conviction that the Catholic Church, ruled by a foreign potentate dressed in the irrational garb of infallibility, 
was a menace not only to the nation's body politic but also to its democratic soul. If allowed to proceed unimpeded, the Pope and his minions, along with Tammany's bosses and supporters, would convert the nation into their personal fiefdom. Puck was not about to let that happen. In cartoons and editorials spanning two decades, the magazine blasted Noffin, conjoined both Tammany and the papacy with invidious comparisons that left few readers in doubt as to their sympathies. Puck Building Puck was housed from 1887 in the landmark Chicago-style Romanesque revival Puck Building at Lafayette and Houston Streets, New York City. The steel frame building was designed by architects Albert and Hermann Wagner in 1885, as the world's largest lithographic press works under a single roof, with its own electricity-generating dynamo. It takes up a full block on Houston Street, bounded by Lafayette and Mulberry Streets. Mad parodied Puck's motto is, What food these morsels be? London edition. A London edition of Puck was published between January 1889 and June 1890. Amongst contributors was the English cartoonist and political satirist Tom Merry. Puck cartoons. C. 1878. Secretary of the Interior Carl Schuzakos U.S. Representative James G. Blaine chopping a tree in the forest. European royalties. Go West. March 30, 1881. Emoticons. March 30, 1881. July 6, 1881. President James A. Garfield. Off sign in post and G. Fault. Gone to meet John Kelly. Figure identified as Boss McLaughlin. November 9, 1881. Cover. German edition. Monopoly Millionaires Dividing the Country 1885, Nasty Little Printers Devils 1888, Cyclone as Metaphor for Political Revolution, School Begins, January 25, 1899, The Infant Hercules and the Standard Oil Serpents, May 23, 1906 issue, depicting U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt grabbing the head of Nelson W. Aldrich and the snake-like body of John D. Rockefeller. Paris in Half Mourning by Ralph Barton, 1915. The Awakening by Henry Hyatt Mayer, 1915. Rapid Transit to Sheil, Where We Are All Going According to the Reverend Drive. Morgan Dix by Joseph Ferdinand Kepler, 1888.